Thanks for joining me. It's Peter Barvis here, cardiologist, and a big thank you for all of those who continue to provide comments and feedback and support the channel. Really, we're all about providing some simple, easy to understand information about heart health. So thanks again for all, all your support. Now, today I wanted to focus on a common topic called aortic stenosis. Now the aortic valve is one of four valves in the heart and this commonly can be affected by various conditions that over time lead to the valve narrowing or leaking. But today's topic is all about the narrowing of the aortic valve called aortic stenosis. What it is and what you need to know about it. So the aortic valve is one of four valves in the heart, and those four valves are the aortic valve, the mitral valve, tricuspid, and the pulmonary. Now these valves are within the heart and allow blood to travel in one direction. The aortic valve takes blood from the left ventricle, and that then pumps the blood out through the aortic valve into the largest artery of our body called the aorta. So when you can think that the blood pumping out of the heart full of oxygen and nutrients is delivered through the aorta and all the various blood vessels from head to toe. However, there are conditions that can affect this aortic valve and this valve can become narrowed and then start causing symptoms. Now, what are the common aortic conditions. Now the aortic valve really can become narrowed by two means and we have one called the congenital aortic valve and that is a condition that you are born with whereby the valve rather than having three little leaflets in its structure is made up of two leaflets and those two over time can then progress and cause narrowing and also in some situations can also leak causing aortic regurgitation. The other condition which is more common is an acquired aortic stenosis and that means that with time and as we age the aortic valve becomes more narrow. Now what are the causes of aortic stenosis? Well aortic valve can be affected by a condition called endocarditis and that is an infection of the valve. It's usually an infection that goes through our bloodstream and clutches or clumps onto the valve causing some initial damage and then over time calcium can build up causing this valve to narrow. You can imagine that as the valve narrows blood traveling through the aorta is restricted and over time symptoms can develop. Now what are the symptoms with aortic stenosis? Well often you are asymptomatic until it reaches a severe point. Initially however there might be symptoms of lethargy and tiredness palpitations, shortness of breath when you're pushing yourself, chest pain, chest tightness when you're pushing yourself, a condition known as angina, or you might feel lightheaded, giddy or passing out. And that is usually in the advanced cases of when the valve has become very, very narrowed. So how do we diagnose aortic stenosis? Well that is diagnosed by your doctor or healthcare professional listening to your heart and there is a murmur that we hear or a sound of blood flow that becomes turbulent. You can imagine a water pipe that develops rust and corrosion then obviously flow through that, through that pipe becomes restricted. Well that's exactly what happens with the aortic valve. It becomes restricted 
and then it causes turbulence because of the increased in pressure across this valve. And that turbulence is what causes the murmur that we can hear when we place the stethoscope on the chest. Other ways to confirm the condition include an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. And that can be most often an ultrasound with a probe placed on the chest with some jelly and looking at the heart from the outside. But in some situations, it may be necessary to perform a procedure called a transesophageal echocardiogram, where we place the probe through the mouth into the gullet or the esophagus, which gets us a closer look at the heart from inside. And we can then identify how bad this valve is and what is the most appropriate treatment. Other conditions that can cause aortic stenosis might be inflammatory conditions or autoimmune conditions or connective tissue conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. But the most common condition that we see in this acquired aortic stenosis normally is degenerative, simple wear and tear. And that over time builds up calcium and it's perhaps the most common um, reason to see this valve causing stenosis in those age 65 or older, but with wear and tear, the valve becomes more calcified and over time it becomes more narrow and can cause symptoms. Now there are two mainstay ways of treating aortic stenosis, and one is surgery, which is usually an open operation to take the old valve out and to replace it with a new valve. More recently, in the last few years, we've seen a push for less invasive procedures. And one of those is what we call a percutaneous or a transcatheter aortic valve. And that is a stent valve you might have heard that can usually be placed from the artery in the groin, the femoral artery, using a device which acts like a stent that we place in the artery of the heart to keep the valve open. Now, when I look at when we look at surgery, surgery involves replacing the valve, and there are usually two types of valves that we use to replace your valve with. One is a biological valve or a tissue valve, and the other is a prosthetic valve, and that's a metallic valve. There are pros and cons with each, but the majority of procedures nowadays are valve replacements with tissue valves or biological valves. And they are usually made up of porcine or cow or pig tissue and require no blood thinning medication as distinct to a valve that has metal or stainless steel that might last longer, however, requires you to be on a, con a medication called warfarin or coumadin. And that's to stop clots from developing across the valve. So which of those we choose depends on the age of the patient and how the patient is presented and the underlying cause of the aortic stenosis. Then we look at these newer procedures, which are these percutaneous or transcatheter aortic valves. And initially they were used in those patients who could not undergo surgery or were too high risk. But more and more we are seeing that they are also effective in patients who might be a little younger and we are seeing very good long-term outcomes. It's still a procedure, it's still invasive, but obviously less invasive than what an open operation is. So again, this video we've looked at what aortic stenosis is, what are the common causes, and then what are the two main treatment strategies we have. Until the next video, bye for now.